What a wonderful sound that is, isn't it? Welcome along, everybody. It's Friday night, it's organ music night, and it's going to be a busy weekend of goodies. We've got all sorts of exciting things happening this weekend. Tonight is Friday night, is organ music night. Tomorrow night is... Tuba, tuba night. If you are a tuba member or an equivalent generous supporter, then you know what happens tomorrow night. Normally it's the first Saturday of every month, but due to <coughs> at the beginning of the month, we couldn't do it on the first Saturday, so we're doing it tomorrow instead. So that's going to be tomorrow night. On Sunday night, we will have Sunday night is organ music night, our usual Sunday night of goodies. And then on Tuesday, I have Monday off, thank God for that. But on Tuesday, on Tuesday, it's my birthday. 24th of January, 1973, a little boy was born in Regmore Hospital in Inverness. And that little boy was me, 50 years ago, good God. So on Tuesday night, we're going to have a special birthday concert. Yes, I am, I am, I am, I am, what's the word I'm looking for? I am, I am giving up my birthday evening to spend time with the Garcho gang, to spend time with you. We're going to have, at the usual time, we're going to have an um, exciting birthday party concert for my 50th birthday on Tuesday. I can't believe I'm going to be 50. That is unbelievable. I, I keep... You know, saying to my mum, ha ha ha, um, bet you can't believe your son is going to be 50. That must make you feel ancient. I'm so, terribly sorry about that. Now, tonight is Friday night, it's organ music night. We are sitting at the organ of Billerbeck Cathedral. Billerbeck up towards the north. Yes, Mike King, 1973. That was when I was born. Yes, a long, long time ago. Mm. Good heavens. Awfully long time ago. I don't remember much of 1973 or 1974, or 1975 for that matter. Um, I do have, one of my earliest recollections is um, going to the hospital with my father to pick up my sister when she was born in 1975. That's actually, I can actually remember that. Uh, we had a blue Ford Cortina at the time, I remember that. And I was, I remember sitting, I wasn't sitting on the back seat, I was sort of, I was, um, I had my arms round the two front headrests, as it were, and I was watching from the middle between the seats as we were driving to the hospital. At least that's what I have in the back of my head. Whether that's actually what happened or not, I don't know. Nonetheless, my earliest recollection. So yes, there we are. I see some tickets being sold already. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. That's very kind of you. Vanessa, ticket link, please. Vanessa is currently downstairs. Um, she will be joining us uh, briefly, but she's got the computer downstairs, so she's able to do all the exciting things she can do. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, a couple of tickets have already been sold this evening. That's very kind of you indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Um, always greatly received. And if you have any requests coming in, don't forget, please send them exclusively. This is very important. Please send them exclusively to the email address gang at garchor.de. Kannst du mal die E-Mail-Adresse auch mal reintun, bitte? Uh, gang at garchor.de. Um, lately, we've had a couple of emails coming in on other email addresses. Now, these are private email addresses, and obviously, I don't, you know, th those don't get the same, um, those don't get the same, there it is, gang at garchor.de. Those don't get the same attention when it comes to the music stuff, because all our private stuff runs over those emails, so um, it's quite difficult. So, for example, we had an email the other day from Kai. Hello, Kai. Um, Kai sent us an email to say that we, we forgot his birthday. Well, we didn't know about your birthday because we didn't get that email. So um, uh, please make sure you send it to gang at gartro.de. All of those request things, anything like that, always send it to gang at gartro.de, please. Um, that way we can guarantee that we will read it um, and also we guarantee that Vanessa reads it, which is much more important. Um, I have so many other things, you know, sometimes, you know, I fly over emails and then they get sort of forgotten in the background. It's not deliberate. I know it's terrible. I'm very sorry about that, but uh, yes. So um, if you have anything, um, your requests, etc., anything you want to know from us, connected to our concerts, gang at Garchor, DE, is the address you want. There we are. Right. Chat over. Let's have a piece of music. We've had a very, very interesting request lately for something that I haven't done for a long time. Can you play, please? some boogie-woogie on a church organ. Well, yes, I can. Um, 
there's a guy on YouTube called Brendan Kavanagh. And uh, Brendan is one of the most famous sort of rock and roll boogie piano players on YouTube. He sort of is always hanging around those public pianos in London stations and things like that. And um, attracting people to play along with him and things like that. And um, Brendan has also now been seen at, as, as, as a public organ in some uh, station in London. And Brendan's been trying his hand at the organ. But thankfully for me, he's not quite... He's not quite as good a boogie player on the organ as he is on the piano yet. But he will be getting there. But let's not forget it. I invented Boogie Woogie at the organ and it sounds something like this.
<laughs> Some boogie woogie at the organ. <clears throat> I do apologize. There will be the occasional cough this evening, um, as is the, uh, <clears throat> the way these things work. I do apologize. Um, nothing we can do about that. Beyond my control. I'm dying. Every, I'm dying. Every bone in my body is broken. What film was that from? Who said that? And my mum is not allowed to answer. I am dying. Every bone in my body is broken. In a rotten French accent. Who said that in what film? Can you remember? If you can, let us know in the chat. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue with the jazzy vein and I'm going to play a piece of music. I have played this before and I think I actually played it for Kai before a long time ago. So let's dedicate this one to Kai again. Um, it's a lovely piece of music, a very gentle and lovely piece of music, but it's by Scott Joplin. And it's not a Scott Joplin ragtime number. It's a Scott Joplin classical piece. It's actually called a concert waltz. It's called Bethina. And I'm going to dedicate this, first of all, to Kai. And I'm also going to dedicate it to Steffi, because Steffi is learning this piece of music even as we speak. So, um, she should be sitting at the piano practicing right now. In fact, go and sit at the piano and play along. <laughs> now, it's a wonderful piece of music. It was very much... Um, very much a sort of departure from, uh, for Scott Joplin in his style of writing. Because up to then, he'd been writing Maple Leaf Rag, The Entertainer, um, mm, what else had he been written? The Original Rags. Uh, what else had he been written, writing up until then? I can't remember the exact dates of all of Scott Joplin's music. Good heavens, that would be quite a task. But this one was 1905. Um, so still relatively early. Still relatively early, but he was branching out into something sort of more classically minded. However, it was still intended as a dance piece. It was still intended to be danced to. So if anyone out there fancies taking their partners for a waltz, now is the time. Bethina from Scott Joplin.
Isn't that a beautiful little piece of music? It's not that little, is it? It's quite a long one for a, for a Scott Joplin com composition. Quite a long one. It's lovely, isn't it? A Bethina, a concert waltz. Hands up, any of you who were out dancing for that one. I'm willing to bet somebody somewhere was having a quick bop through the kitchen, as it were. I bet there was. I bet there was. A long time ago, in a galaxy far away, we received a request from our good friend Don Prince. And Don Prince sent us a piece of music. I'm guessing it's just a Dutch hymn. And I know no more than that. It's number 29 is what it says here. And in brackets, it fits to number 58, number 67, number 191, and number 237, in case you were asking. Now, what's interesting about this is it's a very, very simple hymn melody, but the exciting part about it is the introduction and the afterwards and you know the outro as it were so the intro and the outro i've never seen such beautiful simple four-part harmonizations they are so gorgeous now i've chosen this organ tonight because it's got some rather lovely features on it it's got um it's got celeste what the hell is a celeste well it's a it's a stop well here's a stop it's a string stop Okay, there you are, a string stop. And there's another stop called Vox Celestis. And what that does is it's tuned ever so slightly sharp. It's deliberately out of tune, but both of them together. So here's the, vo here's the viola. Now listen carefully. Ooh. I don't know if you can hear that. It's higher, ever so slightly higher. And both of them together give you this undulating effect. Now, this organ does not just have a one celeste, it has officially two. On the bottom manual we have something called a salicional, or salicional actually, that's how it should be pronounced, which is a bit rounder than the viola. The viola is a bit sort of... It's a bit more sort of, a bit, bit stringier, and this is slightly softer. Yeah? Now, <laughs> to be slightly different to the Vox Celestis, which is tuned ever so slightly higher, there's a stop here called an Undamaris, which you all know translates as waves of the sea. And it's actually tuned slightly flatter, slightly lower than the one here, so. And that gives it a rather lovely warmth. Now you can have that with the Salizuna or with the flute. And it gives a rather lovely effect. Now you can of course then mix those two together. So you have this and this and mix them together. Ooh. And with a bumbling 32 foot beefy bass underneath that, it gives a lovely sort of warm and comforting sound. Now, I I like playing around with the internals of organs. And what I've done here, I've taken two, there are on the swell of this organ, there are two flutes. There's this one. A big sort of, it's called a double flute, a doppel flute. It's wonderful. Now, how about this? Here's a normal one. Now, what I've done, I've gone into the background workings of Hauptwerk, this program, and I have detuned, <laughs> I have detuned some of that Doppelflöte. Not all of it, I've detuned parts of it around the church. And when you mix those two together, you get this. which is absolutely delicious. Now that is called a flute celeste in other organs. It's absolutely beautiful. And um, it's great, it's great, it's great. Great fun indeed. Some real organs have that. Um, Marienstadt, for example, the wonderful organ in Marienstadt has a beautiful, on the, on the um, solo, on the, on, the, on the solo division, it's got a flute and a flute celeste. Oh, and it's just gorgeous.
Yeah, beautiful sound, beautiful sound. And like I say, that's just subtle tweaking in the background here. If you can do it in, you know, different ways. I have done it subtly. For once, I can be subtle, believe it or not. So anyway, right, why am I telling you about this? Well, these wonderful harmonies here, these wonderful harmonies that Don Prince sent for Gazang 29, or Gazang probably 29. I don't speak Dutch, but I do know that you basically have to throw up all the time um, to get the sounds. Sorry about that. Yeah, everyone says Vincent van Gogh, but it's not. It's Vincent van Gogh. So anyway, there you are. Um, <laughs> it's a wonderful language, a wonderful language. This then is Gesang 29 with those beautiful sounds in the background. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Isn't that delicious? Sometimes the simpler things in life are the most beautiful. Now, there's only one way to follow that. And Don said it himself in the chat there. We need some music by Bach. Now, you all know how much I love the music of Bach. I, I, do, I do like it. I just don't like playing it. I'm not into counterpoint. But there are some pieces of Bach's organ music that are easier to play than others, this here being one of them. This is number 721 from the Bach's Werkverzeichnis, Erbarm dich mein, o Herr Gott. Now, if you listen out for the melody, 
I'm sure you will hear the melody. It's in here somewhere. Let me get some registrations for melodies. Yeah, got that? That's a very simple melody and it's in a sort of gorgeous sort of, is it in an unended key? It is really, isn't it? It doesn't end. It sort of should really be sort of Should end in B minor, but it doesn't. It's very clever. Yeah, it sort of leaves you standing somewhere now. Is that deliberate? Of course it is. The melody, by the way, is from someone called Erhard Hagenwald. No, I bet you didn't know that. From 1524, which in European time is almost 25 past three. So, yes. Now, what did Bach do with it? Well, Bach took this melody and turned it into this rather almost, almost jazzy sounding um, composition. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of beef up the organ here and, you know, give it lots of sort of big, fat sounds. This is what it needs for this kind of piece. See what you think.
a very gentle and deliberate and almost plodding, or should it be pleading, there's a good word for this kind of music, um, a piece of music by Johann Sebastian Bach. Not the usual kind of Bach organ music we're used to, but rather lovely nonetheless. There we are. Thank you very much. Let's pop that aside. How are we doing on tickets tonight, Vanessa G? <gasps> Not so good, Mrs. G said downstairs. Um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we're very grateful to you if you uh, consider buying us a virtual ticket. Keeps these concerts going, keeps us in, keeps us in, well, it keeps us in sucky sweeties at the moment so that I can hopefully get my cough under control. <laughs> All good fun nonetheless. Good fun indeed. Right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Always very kind. Now, we have a number of requests coming in here. I see them over there on the desk. Um, Vanessa has disappeared back downstairs. She's keeping an eye on things downstairs tonight as well. So it's a, there's a lot going on in Gartro land at the moment. So we have something exciting here. What's this? That's a score. And that's only one page of a score. Well, that's no use to man or beast. So we have to find that. Oh, right. I see. Vanessa has scribbled some spider poo on the piece of paper. And it's my job to decipher it. Okay, we have a new member. Hello, new member. Who is our new member? I didn't notice that on the way past. Orgelhundehändler. Orgelhundehändler. Organ dog handler. An organ dog handler. That doesn't make sense, does it? Okay, tell us about yourself, Orgelhundhändler. That's rather interesting. An Orgelhundhändler has requested a piece of music from a bygone age. A rather wonderful piece of music that I love playing. What key shall we play it in tonight? Let's play it in. Let's play it in B flat. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an old piece of music. You will remember it from the, um, from the songbook of Mr. Glenn Miller before he died in a Parisian brothel. Everyone said he died on an aeroplane crossing the channel. What nonsense, he died in a Parisian brothel. Hmm, naughty boy. But because his music was so popular and so wonderful, they had to change the story. So they, made, they turned him into a hero who allegedly died in a plane crash. <laughs> anyway, never mind. And uh, probably the most famous piece of music, and this does not tie into my anecdote at all, uh, of the Glenn Miller songbook is, of course, In the Mood.
In the mood, a uh, slightly shorter version, I couldn't remember the middle bit, <coughs> but there we are. <coughs> in the mood from uh, uh, the pen of not Glenn Miller, who wrote In the Mood? I don't actually know that. I'm sure I've got it in a book somewhere. Who wrote? Let's have a look, actually. I've got it probably in here. Who knows who wrote In the Mood? And don't Google it. If you know it, then tell us. In. In. In a mellow tone. Da, 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 da. Oh, what a wonderful piece of music that is. No, that's I'm. It's about to be here somewhere in my book of greatness. It's bound to be in here. Is it not in here? Good heavens. It's not. Ah, here. It must be in here. In the mood. Andy Razaf. I didn't know that. Andy Razaf wrote the words and someone called Garland wrote the music. There you are. Garland and Razaf from 1939. It's, that's, that's not true, actually. It's older than that. It's older than that. It's definitely the organ guy Miller. No, no, Miller didn't write it. He just uh, or had it arranged. Glenn Miller didn't do any work at all. He just played the trombone and earned the money. Mm. And spent it in Paris. <clears throat> yes, haha, <laughs> fun and games. Now, a long time ago in a galaxy far away, I composed some music. And rather, rather, um, Intuitively, I thought, <coughs> I called the album Fraser Gautreaux's Organ Works, which is a play on words, much like Glenn Miller in Paris. Um, a play on words. And these compositions were commissioned by, well, members of the Gautreaux gang out there in Gautreaux gang world. And um, one of them, one of them, I'm actually, I'm, I'm quite proud of all of them, obviously, because they're my own compositions, but the one I'm most proud of is this one. It's something I composed for uh, a guy up near Cologne called Michael, Michael. And Michael requested a piece of music in this style. So this sort of exciting, sort of wishy-washy style <laughs> that I like doing so much. And I took the melody of Come Holy Ghost. <laughs> Yeah, I took that melody and I sort of turned it into something mysterious. Does that make sense? So I called this piece of music Misterioso Tranquilo and dedicated it, of course, to Michael. So if Michael is watching tonight, let's dedicate it back to you again. Um, and uh, yeah, see what you can do. Now, work out the chords and the harmonies I'm doing. You know I love my funky harmonies. So I deliberately at the beginning did something really rather weird. Listen to this.
What do you think of the harmonies? What do you think of the harmonies? I'm going to let you into a little secret. And actually, this is from Magic Mike, the mechanic. Um, what I did, I took a scale. Yeah? It sounds weird on its own, doesn't it? But when you have those funky chords... doing their fancy things. There's also a scale in the bottom half. Ha 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 ha. So when you get them going together, you start getting the harmonies coming together and then you fill them in and play around with them. And the idea is you take the harmonies, you take them from as far away from each other as possible. For example, this moving to this, there's nothing to do with each other. And then this moving to this, oh my God, that's a tritone of way. They've got nothing to do with each other. Another tritone. Another tritone. Ah. And off you go again. Yeah? Moving around all the other things. The basics of science fiction music. So there you are. I, um, I very much enjoyed composing that, and I hope you enjoyed listening to it. Misterioso Tranquilo for my friend Michel up near Cologne. There we are. Now, it's just gone quarter past 11 p.m. here, which means it's time for something from the Great Brown Book of Greatness. And uh, we have, oh, we have a choice tonight. Right, let's have a look. Let's have a little look. We can have, we can have this one. Oh, I quite like that. That's quite nice. Okay. We could have this one. Oh, similar, but kind of nice. That's a dancey one. Oh, we could have uh, the, yeah, this one. <laughs> okay, that's a marchy march. Or we could have this one. <laughs> oh, I quite like that actually. Oh, oh, hold on, it's in two parts. Oh, that's how I'm... Oh, all right, let's have that one. Right, this is number 52 in the Brown Book of Greatness. It's called The the Name of Our Father, is the hymn. I can translate that one very easily. <coughs> Der Name unseres Vaters, the name of our father. Um, so, yes, rather nice. And it sounds to me that we can turn it into a rather sort of almost 1920s Yiddish style piece of music. Now I wonder will this work? Let's play it properly and then we'll play around with it a little bit.
I like that. I do like that indeed. There's something, some, something nice about that. I like that very much. Thank you very much. That was, of course, Gleis van der request for this evening. A rather splendid piece indeed. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Oh, Vanessa just changed the camera right at the end there. Now, our friend Kai had a wonderful request. This was originally for his birthday a couple of weeks ago. And it's... Oh, my goodness me. Oh, this is by oh, this is by a proper composer of music. Oh my goodness me, this is difficult. <gasps> oh my goodness, can I play this? Let's hope so. <clears throat> it's a piece of music called Helen. <coughs> Helen. <coughs> Helen in French. Helen, and it's um, oh my goodness, it's it's from an album, an elegant album of female pianists. Are you allowed to say that in these woke days? I'm sure you are. Well, I'm sure I, I don't give a toss. I'm not politically correct at all. And woke, as far as I'm concerned, can go and stuff itself. Um, there are far more important problems in the world than feelings of immaterial youngsters. That's just my feeling, as an immaterial feeling of a 50-year-old. But never mind. Sorry about that. We shouldn't be doing politics, should we, ladies and gentlemen? Politics are awful. Which is why we should ignore them. Right, Helene. It's in the key of A flat, which is nice and easy for me. I love the key of A flat. And then it modulates to D flat, which is even nicer. I suspect this is why Kai suggested it. However, it does look rather tricky. It's a very much a piano piece. So I'm going to have to sort of imp Oh, hold on. There are three pages. I can spread them out. So I'm going to have to sort of arrange it as we go. Carl Czerny was the composer. Opus 804, number nine. Opus 804. Carl Cherney was a busy boy, wasn't he? Right, let's have a look and see what we can do with this. Not too fast, it says. Thank God for that. Let's see what we can do then.
Helen. There we are. What a rather jolly and uh, lovely piece of music, actually. I like that. I like that. Thank you, Kai, for your request. I like that. Nice indeed. Nice. Uh, a lot of people sort of say, oh, A flat and D flat, horrible keys. Actually, for me, the easiest keys to sight read because, let's face it, there's not many wrong places to put your fingers when you're using all the black notes in the right order. <coughs> Sorry, I can't resist it. We have to do that. I had another, uh, I had an Eric Morgan moment earlier when I was talking to um, an old friend. We were talking about getting all the right notes all in the right order as well. Right, now, talking of getting all the right notes in the right order, I hope I can do this as well. This, again, is a piano arrangement or a piano composition, which I somehow have to turn into an organ arrangement. Now, this was requested by Razbaz a long time ago, and uh, we never got around to playing it. And Vanessa printed it out and gave it to me and said, play it tonight. So I should really have tried practicing this. Um, Practicing being something I'm not very <coughs> good at. <laughs> um, it's a time thing, really. So I'm going to try to play it. This is much sight reading yet again. Um, this time it's a piece of music with a Scottish connection. Yes, indeed. Now, uh, and also an, uh, an, a Morecambe, an Eric Morecambe and Ernie Wise connection as well. It's a piece of music by Edvard Grieg. It's not the Grieg Piano Concerto by him and him. It's not that. It's uh, Grieg's Wedding Day in Trollhaugen, which is rather nice indeed. It's from his Lyric Pieces, Opus 65, number 6. I think from his Lyric Pieces was also um, that wonderful thing in F-sharp major. the spring or something like that. Isn't that what it's called? Something like that. Um, very lovely piano pieces by Grieg. When I was a student I played all of those things and I don't recall playing this one um, but I kind of know what it's supposed to sound like. So here goes nothing for Rasper's wedding day in Trollhagen. Mm. <laughs>
Wow, the wedding day at Trollholm. That's what I was looking for at the end. We should have had nice, let's do the ending again because it's so much fun. Hold on, it's nice and gentle. Lots of open fifths, which repeat themselves. I think that's right. And then. That's better. That's better. There we are, the wedding day for Rasbaz. A lovely, lovely piece of music by Eddie Grieg, whose grandmother was Scottish. There you are. There's always a Scottish connection. There has to be a Scottish connection somewhere. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting there. We're getting there. Now, I don't see any more requests coming in. Vanessa, are there any more requests? She says yes. Can I have them, please? There's something in the printer, she says. Right, let's wander over to the printer and see what we can find. Das ist nur eine Seite. Oh, no, it's not. Hold on. There's more. Alles gut. Right. <laughs> okay. We have a request um, from our friend Alexander. Now, this is one of those unplayable things that only Alexander can do. But I've been putting these things off for years. I always say to Alexander, no, I need to practice it. And then I never play it. So I just sight read something for, just sight read something for our friend Rasbas. So I suppose I can sight read this for, uh, oh, hold on a minute. Ah, I recognize this. Is this not? Yeah, this is, I need, I need something to jam a key. Oh boy, did we change registrations? We do change registrations. This is going to be difficult then in that case. What is that then up there? That's, uh, oh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> All right. There's a story behind this piece of music. This piece of music was composed for a broken organ. Um, there was a piece of organ music that didn't work. There was an organ that was broken. How am I going to do this? I need to jam something in there. Hold on, hold on. Back to the drawing board. 
Back to the drawing board. In the cupboard of hell, I will find something like a pencil. Right, here we go. I call it the cupboard of hell because it's, well, it's basically full of crap that nobody's allowed to see. It's, in other words, my paperwork. Uh, will this work? Probably not, actually. Mm, might not. It might. Hold on. It might. That will do it. So this piece of music has got this annoying thing going on the whole time. This note that sort of hangs around in the background. Now, while we're doing that, we need some... No, actually, we need some of these registrations, really. Some soft registrations. Hmm. How are we going to do this? Actually, I think we'll do it like this. I'm going to leave that there. It's annoying, and it's supposed to be annoying. <clears throat> so we need... We need something here. We need great flute, eight, uh, 16 and 8, and a principle. There we go. And um, we need something similar down there. So what I think we'll do is we'll play it down on the grate. Yeah, we'll do that. Right, this piece of music is called The March of the Three Kings. Mmm. And it's rather interesting. It's by Dubois. Dubois was, of course, the famous organist of that famous toccata. But he also wrote this piece of music, March of the Magi Kings. Let's go for it. It's annoying, but it's fun.
Yeah. Ha! Now, okay, well, that, that's sort of what Theodore Dubois was talking about. Um, the stuck piece of music. It's, again, this is Alexander. Alexander loves playing games with me. Now, when Kai uh, gives me a piece of music in A-flat and D-flat, no problem at all. I love A-flat and D-flat. Oh, wonderful. However, this piece of music is in E major and B major, which, let's face it, are the most evil keys ever considered. Um, yes, horrendous keys. So that is not a keeper, I'm afraid, Alexander. But thank you very much nonetheless. Thank you, Alexander, for your March of the Three Kings. Now, our friend Joe. Joe, 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 Joe. Yes, you can. You can still hear that note, can't you? I'm sorry about that. Let me play something else. Ah, oh, there you are. It's gone. It's... That's correct, yes. It's, um, man hält ein Ton mit einem Bleistift die ganze Zeit. It's nerved. This is the idea. No, the, <coughs> the whole point, the March of the Three Kings, that note is supposed to be the star in the East that they follow. <coughs> Honest. Honest. Look, everyone, the big jazzy books of greatness. And in here, there is a piece of music that I'm going to play for my good friend, Joe. And it is, he said, trying to find it. Here it is. If you've ever been on the south coast of France, La Belle France, if you've ever been near Monte Carlo and Monaco and all those places, you will have passed the little, wonderful little fishing village and now uh, incredible sort of spot for richness, um, the beautiful city of Antibes. And a very long time ago, New Orleans musician Sidney Bechet. Sidney Bechet was one of the forefathers of jazz as it ever was. And Sidney left New Orleans to go and live. Can I have a drink, please, Mrs. G, right. before you disappear? Right. Um, Where are you going? Oh, heavens above, she's gone. Right, I can't have a drink then. Uh, and Sidney left uh, the US to go and live in France and he chose the city of Antibes to go and live in, as well as Paris. He stayed in Paris for a long time, but he moved to Antibes and spent the rest of his life wonderfully and uh, excessively, shall we say, on the south coast of France and had a wonderful time. And uh, he wrote a wonderful tune, which I used to love playing. I used to play in a sort of a traditional or a classic jazz band, as I prefer to call them. And um, one of our, that's it, Ras Baz has got it. And one of our, um, one of our favorites was this one, Dans les rues d'Antibes, in the streets of Antibes. And um, this was played by our clarinet and soprano saxophone player, Andy. And Andy sounded just like Sidney Bechet. He had that amazing vibrato that Sidney Bechet had. And um, Andy would play this, and we used to love playing it. There's some great fun that can be had doing it. So let's dedicate this to Joe. Joe requested something by Sidney Bechet. So here it is, Sidney Bechet's Dans les rues d'Antibes, in the streets of Antibes. And it's a proper New Orleans march, so get ready.
Les rues d'Antibes for our friend Joe. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, we've pretty much wrapped it up for tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Friday Night is Organ Music Night. It's the spot of midnight. Can we do a bell? We've got bells in this organ. It's midnight. Ha ha, so we can do this. Can I do 12 of them? Who cares? Dans les rues d'Antibes. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That was Friday Night is Organ Music Night. How were ticket sales this evening, Vanessa? Ooh, that's not a good re reaction. Okay, ticket sales weren't too hot this evening, apparently, ladies and gentlemen, but thank you nonetheless for being there. Don't forget to give the video a thumb, excuse me, a thumbs up on the way past. Thumbs up is very important. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. We had the uh, intention of getting 50,000 subscribers together by the time we hit Tuesday, my 50th birthday, coming up on Tuesday. Um, we haven't quite made it yet, and I had a look through my statistics. 52% of viewers still aren't subscribed to the channel. 52%. So I've got 48, I've got almost 49,000 subscribers. So imagine everybody watching subscribe. That means I would have a lot more. That means I'd have 98,000 subscribers. That would be rather wonderful, wouldn't it indeed? So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for turning up tonight. Tomorrow night is our tuba concert for our... <laughs> for our tuba members, etc., etc. Uh, that's coming up tomorrow night. Sunday night is Sunday night is organ music night. Back at the organ again, of course. And on the coming Tuesday, on coming Tuesday, it's my big 50th birthday bash, which is rather exciting. So I hope you will join us for all of those concerts and uh, have a wonderful time with us together. It's time then, ladies and gentlemen, to say tatty bye and to see you on uh, either tomorrow or on Sunday night. And uh, as usual, we will finish with the bye bye blues. Mm -hmm.